Here, to use u substitution, we want to start the same way as always. We want to think about what basic structure applies to this one. Which of the basic forms does it match? And it might take some process of elimination to figure out which one it fits. It's not e to the x. It's not uh, x to a power. It's not a trig function. But it kind of looks like 1 over x. Not quite, but it's kind of that same structure. We have, instead of a 1 on top, we have a 9. But we're starting to get comfortable with the fact that constant multiples don't bother us too much. And then on the bottom, we have something like an x, although it's 12x minus 4. But it's kind of the same idea. So let's remind ourselves that the integral of 1 over u du would be the natural log of u plus c. That's our basic rule. And we'll have to figure out how to make this work with the one that we have, but it already gives us an idea of what u should be. This naturally tells us that u should be 12x minus 4. And we can start with that starting point and work from there. Once we pick u, the first step is always to find du, which will be the derivative of u, in our case that's 12, times dx. And then we can make our substitution. So in this case, we'll have the integral. The denominator will get replaced with u. And then the tricky part is that we don't have a 12 dx to substitute out. What we do have is a 9 and a dx. And the 9 doesn't really help us, so we'll ignore it for a second and think about how can we just swap out the dx. As we've done before, we're going to do that by dividing by 12 here. So we'll have 1 12th du equals dx. So what that means is, in our substituted form, we're going to have 1 12th du, and then we still have this 9 that didn't get replaced in the substitution. So that might look kind of complicated at first, but we're just replacing the pieces that we can. 12x minus 4 gets replaced with u, dx gets replaced with 1 12th du, and the 9 we couldn't do anything with, so we'll just leave it as is. Now to simplify things a little bit, I'm going to combine the 9 and the 1 12th into one fraction, just to kind of move them out by themselves. So I'm going to write 9 twelfths, or of course you could write 3 fourths if you like. And then we have 1 over u du. So by separating the 9 and the 1 12th out in front, the remainder looks just like this form we know how to deal with. So the 9 twelfths will get carried along as we integrate. And then 1 over u gets replaced with the natural log of u plus c. We're almost done. The only last thing is to replace u back with 12x minus 4. Now, you might be tempted to put parentheses around the 12x minus 4, but I should mention that it actually turns out to be the natural log of the absolute value of 12x minus 4. The reasons for this are a little bit more complicated than I want to take time to talk about. If you look at the notes on the website, you might see an explanation for this in a little bit more detail. But for now, just suffice it to say that it turns out that the antiderivative of 1 over u is technically the natural log of the absolute value of u. Because whether you differentiate the positive or negative version, you still end up with 1 over u. So it's kind of like how you need to add a plus c onto things to account for multiple versions. It's kind of the same thing, that when you take the antiderivative of 1 over u, you need to account for the positive or negative. So the absolute value comes into play. I mentioned all that just to say, with these examples, just put absolute value. And if you're really interested, we can talk more later about why that is. But if you're not interested, just remember to do that. It's not a really big deal, and it's not something that I'll harp on too much, but I just want to mention it. Now this one is another pattern like the one that we saw with the trig functions, where once you did an example or two, something like cosine of 7x or sine of negative 4x, once you did a couple of those, you recognize a pattern to the point where you can shortcut and skip a lot of this work of actually writing down what u and du are. You can sort of guess at what they are carefully, and you can 
arrive at the answer much more quickly. So let me try to apply that same idea here. Let's say, for example, I wanted the integral of 1 over 4x minus 3. Now you can pause here and see if you can find the answer without going through the whole process of writing down u and du. Just try to think about the pattern that we observed on the last example, where this 1 over 12x minus 4 turned into the natural log of 12x minus 4. And then since we had a 9 to begin with, we had a 9 in our answer. That just got carried along and didn't change whatsoever. But the extra piece that got added on was division by 12. And that came out of the fact that we had a 12 times x here, which showed up in our du. So if you recognize those patterns, you should be able to look at 1 over 4x minus 3 and figure out what the answer is without actually doing any work. So I'll write the answer down, but if you've tried it yourself, maybe you can see that the 1 over 4x minus 3, the 1 over something, just gets replaced with the natural log of the absolute value of that. And then because there was a 4 in front of the x, there's going to be a 4 in our du that we have to account for by dividing by it. So we'll have 1 fourth in front of the, four, the whole answer. And then, of course, plus c. So if you can't jump straight there yet, that's okay. You can do the whole process of picking u, finding du, and being careful with your substitution. But it's nice when you can find these shortcuts, especially because, as I mentioned, there are going to be problems later on that involve multiple versions of problems like this. And it's just a lot better if you can jump straight to the answer on each one rather than having to stop and do a separate u substitution for each problem. Here's another example, just like it. So let's say we have 3 over 2 minus 8x dx. By the same pattern, the 1 over 2 minus 8x gets replaced with the natural log of 2 minus 8x with the absolute value. And then because there's a negative 8 in front of the x, we'll have to divide by negative 8. And then because there's a 3 to begin with on top, that will get carried along unchanged, and we'll have negative 3 eighths on in front of the natural log. So again, just trying to illustrate these patterns so that you can save yourself some time and effort. But after you've seen the whole substitution process, you can jump to these. Don't try to jump to these right away. You should be comfortable and familiar with the whole substitution problem, because if the problem changes at all, Let's say it doesn't fit exactly that form. Let's say it looks something like this. Now you can't just use that process. You can't just jump to the answer like you did before. Now you have to slow down and do the whole process. So you really should know and be very comfortable with doing u substitution the long way. It's just that there happen to be some problems that you can do by shortcutting them. But let's try this one. Let's see if we can apply the same kind of process to this one. It might be hard to see that this is the reciprocal version, but think back to that other method that we have where we look for two pieces, one of which looks like the derivative of the other. And here we have something like x squared and something like x, and we know that when we take derivatives, things drop by one power, so it might be helpful to try making the denominator u, and maybe the numerator will turn out to be dq. So let's try that. If u is x squared minus x plus 7, du is 2x minus 1 times dx. So we're not quite there, but if you look carefully, you should see that we're almost there. We can almost make the substitution. We just need one extra piece. See if you can figure out what that is. This denominator can get replaced with u, and then all of this can't quite get replaced with du, but it happens to be 2 times du. So we got lucky a little bit. If it was something like 4x minus 3, we'd be stuck and we'd have to try something totally different. It turns out this method of integration wouldn't even work in that case. We'd have to do a different approach. But we got lucky because 2 times du is indeed 4x minus 2 times dx. So that makes us able to do our substitution. So once we substitute, we'll have the integral of 1 over u 
and then the 4x minus 2 gets replaced with 2 times du. And so we can integrate the 2 gets carried along. 1 over u becomes the natural log of u, or really the natural log of the absolute value of u. And so our final answer is 2 times the natural log of the absolute value of x squared minus x plus 7. There's our final answer. So reciprocals like this you can handle with u substitution, but if they're different, if the u and du don't match up just right, or after a tweak like multiplying by 2, then we need to try a different method of integration. U substitution won't work. But this one it happened to work out pretty well.